Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I want to talk to you about blackberries, but before you go running the other direction, I'm talking about thornless blackberries. These ones beside me and behind me here that are wonderful to manage in the garden. Locally here, blackberries grow like weeds, literally. You only have to go to the margin of any farmer's field to find it covered in a long hedgerow of blackberries. In fact, that's where I found these wild ones right beside my house and I'm being careful not to prickle myself, but yes, in big, big mounding masses across the edge of my property are a bunch of blackberries. That's the way we view blackberries around here. They're, they're a wonderful fruit that grows on somebody else's property, so long as somebody else is picking them. So um, a word on the prickles, or actually maybe I'll give you 20 seconds of a uh, botanical geekery here, so I won't go too long on it, is that these are not thorns, botanically speaking. Correctly speaking, they're prickles. A thorn is a modified stem. This is an extension of the epidermis. So uh, technically speaking, all blackberries are thornless. All roses as well are thornless, but in the common usage, we call these thorns. All right, to look at the thornless blackberry here, I've got uh, one thing that people don't note about them so much uh, as a selling point. I mean, it's, it's maybe enough to say that they're thornless, but the fruit is exceptionally large. In comparison to the wild blackberry fruit that I've harvested here, I'll show you on a plate here. On the left you'll see the regular blackberries that I harvested uh, across the field there, and on the right you'll see the thornless blackberries. Big, beautiful, juicy berries. So there's some advantages beyond just them being thornless. The reason I wanted to talk to you today though is because blackberries show a good case in point about roses and pruning and pruning on all brambles. So blackberries, raspberries, and roses, some of those have a, a fruiting habit where they send vegetative growth one year, then they send, then that growth fruits the following year. And so it can make it a little tricky in terms of pruning. So let me show you some close-up shots here to show you how you can tell the difference between those shoots and when you should be pruning those. All right, up close and personal here with my thornless blackberry. And this is last year's growth. So you're gonna to have to be able to do the pruning properly, distinguish between last year's growth and this year's growth really easy right now because this year's growth has all this fruit on it. And you can see it's a, a dark green color foliage. It's bent down under the weight of the fruit. And I mean, so easy to distinguish, right? Then you go up here and you see the brand new shoots. And those ones are light green in color and yet there are no flowering branches on that. So you just have fresh green shoots across the top here, fresh green leaves. They're not weighted down by fruits. So they tend to be fairly upright and that's how you tell the difference. So. I'm not going to go ahead on this plant and demonstrate how to cut off the old growth because I'm still harvesting from the old growth. I'm still enjoying these fruit. So I'm going to leave those on for a minute, but I will demonstrate on a rambling rose that I have uh, in my boulevard here that I can show you the difference between the old and the new growth and I'll chop off the old growth to show you how it's done. Okay, come on, you knew I had to come around to roses at one point or another. But if you look at the one behind me, it's a great example of exactly what the blackberry has done. You see these long shoots, these are the brand new growth. But what it did first along these side shoots beside me is it flowered heavily once in the spring. This is peculiar to a, a whole group of roses called the once flowering ramblers. And so the way to prune it, um, you have some choices here. What I like is to favor this brand new growth at the top here. It's the freshest, most vigorous growth. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off this growth down low here, and then I'm going to train this back down the fence so that I get those beautiful laterals, heavy flowering for next year. That's a, it's a method in roses called pegging. If you peg down the long stem of the rose, you'll get heavy flowering along the laterals the following year, along the horizontal part of the stem. All right, let me show you the, uh, the actual pruning cuts. Okay, in a bit of a closer up view here, you can see that along 
this flowered stem, it's actually sending brand new shoots going straight upwards. And if you choose to do so, you can leave those on or choose some of them to keep on growing on and you'll get a larger shrub. Myself, I want to keep it contained to the same area and basically the same form that it had last year. So I'm going to favor those brand new stems and just replace this entirely. And to do that, I'm going to cut it back at the base. All right, that was a big cut. I'm going to just drag this big section out of here. And you can see there's a couple other stems here that I did the same thing to. So I'm just going to cut those back at the base as well and then train down that uh, brand new shoot. Um, I'll do that off camera. So thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have any questions on uh, blackberries, thornless blackberries, uh, particularly propagation. I'll be taking some propagation cuts of those uh, shortly and so I can uh, I can certainly fill you in on that. Um, and of course rambling roses. If you have any questions on any of those things leave those below the video. Thanks for watching.